Welcome to Blue Mouse Podcast. My name is Emily. If you're new here, welcome. I typically create lots of knitting patterns, but I do like to do the occasional podcast. I just want to talk a little bit about the things I've been knitting lately, starting with this uh, top I'm wearing. I'll stand up and kind of show it to you. It has garter sleeves and a wavy rib front and then a normal round neckline. So wavy rib on the front and back body and then the sleeves are short. They're knit in garter in the round. Slightly cropped, so you can see here. This is actually the second one that I've made. This is the final version. It's going to become a pattern. I know it's kind of off season, but I had planned to have this out earlier, but you know, it happens. I do think you could wear this year round. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, then it'll be a perfect time to start making one of these. But yeah, I'm really into cotton sweaters at the moment, or cotton tops, uh, particularly made with DK weight yarn. So the first, the first one I made didn't turn out amazing. I had trouble figuring out how to do short rows when you're working an all over stitch pattern, especially when you're working two different stitch patterns, which is typically why I like to work in stockinette when I'm working either a raglan or a yoke sweater. But I had remembered this technique from years ago that I had worked on. I read it in a book. I can't quite remember which one, but it was like a very basic explanation of how to knit a raglan without short row shaping. So essentially you start working it flat and you work a set amount of rows. I think I knit about an inch or a little over an inch flat. So you start with just a couple stitches on each bit of the front of the raglan and you increase at the normal rate that you would like to. And then after about an inch, you join in the round. So you're going to cast on stitches in the middle to kind of bridge this gap. It helps you bypass the short rows because short row shaping is done so that the back is higher than the front so that you're not choked. If they were the same length, then your sweater would kind of pull up on your neck and you might, and it wouldn't be very comfortable to wear. So like this one, for example, you might be able to tell that the back right here is higher than the front. So this one's made with short rows. I didn't really fix the neckline because I knew I wasn't going to keep this version as is. So it looks okay from the front, but then from the back, I couldn't figure out how to incorporate the stitch pattern very easily. I think it would have been doable but it would have been way more complicated than how I ended up doing it. So we also have the sleeves have that little bit of stockinette. And I just think it all over looked a little bit more sloppy. Whereas this version, um, I did, I do need to add a row of purl stitches here. So there's not a starting gap of stockinette, but the back does not have a portion of stockinette. So I don't know if I explained that very well. It's not a technique that I'm very familiar with. In fact, this might be the first time that I've done it in a pattern. I know that I've done it in the past once, and I'm, I'm sure the sweater was on the podcast. I could never figure out how to get it like fully figured out. It was a more complex sweater. It was a raglan with like lace sleeves and an all over stitch pattern in the body. And the gauge difference between the lace sleeves and the body was too extreme that I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. So this was a little bit more simple, and I think you could end up making this long sleeved if you really wanted to. It just depends on how much you want to knit um, garter in the round. I'm not a huge fan of knitting garter in the round. You only knit, I don't know if you can see, it's even shorter in the final pattern, it's shorter by like an inch, but you only knit like a tiny bit after the yoke, and then you do just a tiny bit of ribbing. But I've been having a lot of fun with raglans lately. They are my new favorite thing to knit, and I feel like the writing process has really clicked with me. I've made so many at this point, and more than I've put out patterns for, because some didn't turn out and some are still in progress. I feel like this has really, really clicked for me, and it's exciting because it just means I can open up a whole new world of knitting raglans with like an all-over stitch pattern. So I'm really, really happy with this. I did knit the original in a now discontinued yarn, I think this pattern might be, or this sample might be from last summer. So the yarn was still very much in stock. I have a bunch of patterns in this yarn actually that were in progress. So I had to find a bunch of substitutes. So this is Sugar Wheel Cotton Solids 
I believe that the striped version is still in stock, but they have discontinued the solid version. So this is made with drops, and I believe it's cotton light. So I, I bought like three or four different kinds of yarn that matched the similar gauge to the original yarn, because I have a bunch of patterns in this yarn. For this one, I tried the drops cotton light. And while I do like it, I think it's comfortable to wear. It's not the softest cotton, but it's not scratchy by any means. It's just a little bit more structured. This is soft and very drapey. I don't know if you can tell just how drapey it is, but it has amazing feel to it. It's very, very soft and cozy and like cushy. Whereas the one that I'm wearing is soft, but it's more rigid. It's not as rigid as like a mercerized cotton, but it's probably somewhere in between the feel of something like this and a mercerized cotton. It has structure to it. So I would love to knit one of these again in a softer yarn or a little bit more drapey yarn. So that's my plan eventually, maybe before next spring. So far I like this one and I really like the color a lot. Yeah, that's the first thing that I've been working on. I finished the sample over the summer and finally finished the pattern. It was a labor of love. It has a boatload of charts. Everything's written, but it also has a boatload of charts. But otherwise, this should be available in late October, early November, depending on how long it takes testers. The more I think about it, I actually think it'll be ready in November. I think I've shown this to you before. This is, let me see if I can find... I don't want to use like an ugly hanger. I have a, a wooden one somewhere. Okay, I'll just use this one. It's an ugly hanger, but it'll do. This is an unnamed pattern. I'm so bad at naming them. Yeah, this is my wavy rib cardigan. It will have a different name at some point. You can kind of tell that I'm obsessed with a certain stitch. <laughs> um, so this is a drop shoulder cardigan worked from the bottom up um, and then you pick up the sleeves and knit them down and they are wide sleeves with a garter with a garter edging and then you knit an applied neck band at the end so that is currently in testing this is one of my favorite things I've ever made and I'm waiting to get proper photos of it to wear it because I don't want to accidentally stain it or rip it or something but I'm really looking forward to wearing this this fall it is made with Lion Brand Kobu, which is a bamboo yarn, and it has amazing drape. It feels great. It's not rigid in the slightest bit. Like, you can just tell. I just love the way this feels. So this was another pattern that I originally knit in the Sugar Wheel Cotton Solids, which is this yarn, that I had to re-knit with something similar to substitute it. So I chose Kobu, but yeah, I really love this one and I'm looking forward to taking pictures of it. Johnny and I are going to Colorado next week. So I'm going to bring this, take photos of it in the really beautiful fall colors. And then I get to wear it all fall and winter long. So I'm really looking forward to that. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. I love a good applied border or an applied neckband. It's a labor of love, but it is so, so worth it. This was a just normal written pattern that kind of told you to work in pattern once the pattern was established. And a couple of my testers said that was a little bit too hard to follow. So I just recently added charts and they're working on that right now. And I will have it double checked by my tech editor. It'll be mostly charted if you prefer that. Um, yeah, just a couple more things. Whenever I don't have a project on the needles, I get very antsy. So even though I have lots of things to write up, I will start something new because when it's late at night and I'm ready to relax, I need to have something to knit on. So that is where this comes from. And I'm sure you'll be able to notice what the problem is pretty soon. Anybody notice anything? Nobody will notice, right? So I ordered a batch of yarn from somebody, I think in Turkey, off of Etsy. And that's how I got this yarn and a bunch of other drops yarn and a couple European brands that they don't sell near me. 
So I made a big order, but I only ordered a couple balls of this yarn. I'll put it on screen because I can't quite remember what it is. It's a linen cotton mix, I believe from Drops, but it might be a different company. And I wanted to just try it, so I only ordered a couple. And then I got this idea for this pattern and got halfway done before I realized, oh, I'm out of yarn, I need to order more. And the woman ships very quickly from Turkey. I think it got here in maybe a week or less. They didn't have the dye lot that I was looking for, but I was like, oh, this is a commercial grade yarn. Usually the dye lots are pretty similar. Uh, I didn't notice. I knit at night mostly, so it was dark in my office and I just, I did not notice. But then I, I blocked it. Again, I didn't notice when I blocked it because it uh, all turns a dark pink. But then once it dried and I tried it on, <clears throat> I realized that it has a very noticeable stripe. So it's worked from the bottom up in the round. You start with a little bit of garter and then you work your way up, split into two pieces, and you work kind of an increase along the edge to create a very neat sleeve made out of garter. All the while you're working a round neck-ish. <laughs> and then at the end, you pick up and knit kind of a rolled hem. So if you wanted it to be more rolled, you could knit more rows and it will fold over more on itself. I really like this, but I'm gonna have to knit another sample or maybe I can fix the coloring in post. I'm not sure, but I like this. This is on my list to write up because it's fairly simple compared to a lot of the other stuff I've been writing. It's almost all stockinette, but I really like uh, the sleeves. So originally Johnny and I were supposed to be going on vacation to Norway, but that didn't end up happening. So I knit these Scandinavian mittens. It's a pattern by Scandia Knits. She has so many mittens that I'll have to put which one it is on screen. I love these. I think they look great. I've never been much of a color work knitter. I've always been really, really bad at it actually. So I'm incredibly proud of the way that these have turned out. It's the most complicated color work thing I've ever made and it was incredibly easy. I was actually surprised how much I enjoyed it and how easy I found it. So it's it sparked an inspiration for color work knitting in me. So you might see some basic color work knitting on the channel soon. And I hope to do better color work knitting tutorials because I feel like I have a much better grasp on it. My tension's not amazing, but for this being my first color work project in a really long time, very proud of it. Oh, and the yarn, I will have to put it on screen. I got it out on the East Coast in Maine a couple years ago, and I've been waiting for a perfect use for it. It's a really nice wool. It's a little bit, um, I don't wanna say it's scratchy. I'm very sensitive to wool. So I don't wanna say it's scratchy, but it's it's not the, it's not super, super soft. It's not like a merino, I don't think, but it's soft enough that this doesn't bother me at all. So very happy with that. I have enough left over, I think, to make another one if I wanted to make a different uh, stitch pattern version. This is a partially failed attempt at a cowl. I've seen a lot of these kind of almost diagonal cowls. I'm not sure if you've ever knit one before and I've been trying to figure out how they're constructed and I've been practicing. This is my second attempt and it's not not great. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to redo the math and try and figure it out more. You knit like a triangle and at the top you knit flat for a little bit. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. And then you sew the starting edge with the flat side edge of the top. So you, it like is diagonal. It's like uh, like this kind of, but much bigger. So this has not been working out great. I love the yarn. This was another yarn I got in that big order from Turkey. It's not drops yarn, but I really like it. I'll put it on screen. I didn't bring any of the ball bands up with me. It's kind of a V eyelet shape. Lots of eyelets here with bobbles. And then the rest is garter. And it's in this really pretty like mauve color. Uh, this one's on timeout for a little bit cause I got a little frustrated with it. It's a lot of math and it's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I don't usually knit anything. It's not quite on the bias. I don't know how to explain it. 
but I have been finding it a little bit too complicated, so it's on timeout for now. But I intend to pick it up later. This is my, my swatch for it. I intend to pick it up later. I tried it with stockinette. I don't know how well you can see that, but it just didn't stand out as much. I think with the garter, it really stands out. Hopefully in the next episode, you guys will see some progress on that. Sorry, I'm rushing because I am supposed to be walking the dog with my husband right now. A raglan sweater that I've been working on. It doesn't have any sleeves yet and only half the hem is finished. So this is a pattern that I've had in my mind for a really, really long time and I'm finally going for it. So the idea behind it is like, I think I might call it a choose your, choose your own adventure raglan. I don't know if that exists or not, but I'm going to have loads of options and it's going to be a very extensive and in-depth pattern and it'll be great for beginners too because we'll walk you through how to make your first raglan and really customize it to your liking. It's going to have like a lot of neckline options. I'm not sure. I think it's like six or eight neckline options, like six or eight raglan seam options. Two, uh, so I have two lengths, four hems, four to six sleeve options. And um, am I missing anything? Yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to make three versions for my samples using three different combinations. So this one has a turtleneck. It has kind of a pretty detailed raglan. I don't know how well you can see that. It's kind of like alternating a row of pearls. Oh, and there's gonna be a bunch of different options for increases depending on your preference. So this was my initial one. I learned that you can't do lifted increases when you have an increase row stacked on top of each other. So good to know. You'll have to do make one increases until your, until your increase rows are more spaced out and then you can switch to lifted increases. So that's what I did. At the beginning, they are make one increases and then I switched, I switched to lifted increases for the rest. And I also carried, it's hard to tell, but I carried the stitch pattern down the side and I'm doing a split hem. And I did a different bind off than I typically do. It's a sewn tubular bind off, but it's different than I've ever done before. So what you do is you kind of separate in one row, you take a separate set of needles and you separate your knits and your pearls. There's a couple setup rows for it, but you separate your knits and your pearls and then they're kind of laying against each other like a preparation for a Kitchener stitch. And that's what you do is you work a Kitchener stitch seam across and it seams them together. I'm not so sure about it. I'm a little, I need to be convinced. This is what it looks like. So maybe it's just that mine's sloppy, but it's curved and it's very noticeable. So I'm going to try and fix this with blocking and maybe my tension while I was seaming was off. I'm not sure. A work in progress probably for the fall and winter and hoping to have a very extensive pattern out to you at some point. I have a large percentage of it written. I have all of the raglan increases written and they're written for all the various neckline options, which is kind of split into two camps. One where you knit kind of a tighter start to your neckline and one where you knit kind of a wider start to your neckline. And then you work a section where you're kind of working different depending on your neckline. Then after that section, everything's the same all the way down for um, each neckline for each size. So yeah, this one's been really fun. I'm using Yarn Bee Easy Going Colorway Frosting. So I really like this yarn. We'll see how well it holds up. It feels like it could pill. It's so soft. This has to be the softest acrylic yarn I've ever used. It's an acrylic polyamide mix. Final few things. Lightning round, should we say? I'll have to put the pattern on screen. I have it here. It's uh, the Lumi or Loom Pullover by Sari Nordland. I have barely begun, but knitting those mittens made me really want to knit color work. So here we are. <laughs> Not much you can tell, but it's a folded hem neckline or folded neckline, which I really love. And I'm using Gilead yarn. I don't think I have any on me. Oh, yes I do. Using Gilead yarn. Really happy with how this is shaping up. I'll have more thoughts on it once I'm a little further along. But lightning round continues. I made a shawl. This was another thing I started and knit on a whim because I was really bored at night not having a project. 
but here it is. It's a faded shawl and it's a very big triangular shawl. So it has eyelet details mixed with garter and then it's faded all the way. This one is very pretty. I'm excited about this one. We'll be taking pictures of it um, next week as well. Here it is. It creates a very deep V, which I love. I'll put it on, but you won't be able to hear me because my mic will be covered. I'll put the details on screen. I just used leftover yarn. So two of them are full cakes and one of them is a half cake because it's all that I had. Final thing I think is if anyone remembers this pattern from like five years ago or something, it's crazy how old this is. I'll try and show you real fast. It's using Ulysses yarn. I am redoing this one and I've just been swatching. So I have the chart pretty much fully done, just swatching to see quite how many rows. I made this swatch in two colors, but it will be a four color yoke sweater and I'm really not proficient with yoke sweaters. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, this is all that I have so far. It's unblocked. Just a note that if you ever were excited about this, it's coming back and I'm knitting it in different, more autumnal colors. So here's a couple of the autumnal colors. I do think I will eventually frog this and re-knit it in these colors because I do like them. But because I don't want to frog it and deal with fixing the yarn, I'm going to knit it in autumnal colors first. Johnny just asked uh, our puppy if he wants to go for a walk. I'm sure you can hear him. He gets super chatty when he goes for a walk. He's so excited. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I've been working on. I am knitting a new one of these, if you remember this from last fall. The pattern is pretty much written up. Um, I just need to knit one more final test version that I'm going to take with me next week. And then I will send it to my editor. And hopefully by the time it gets chilly or really chilly, this will be ready to go out. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm rushing, but we're trying to beat the sunset and the sun's really going down. So we got to get him out on his walk. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next episode. If you need any knitting tutorials, you can find tons on my channel with more coming out all the time. Thank you guys.